Don't mind me, just your number one dad. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Stevie, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a full-blown dedicated video on luteal phase defect, also known as progesterone deficiency. So of course, as a disclaimer, I am not a doctor. This video is just going to be about my personal experiences as someone who actively deals with luteal phase defect. So let's start off with what is luteal phase defect or progesterone deficiency. So starting off, let's go over a woman's cycle. There are different phases of a woman's cycle. It starts with menstruation, and then it goes to the follicular phase, and then it goes to ovulation, and then it ends in luteal phase. So your luteal phase is the last phase of a woman's cycle. It starts with ovulation and either ends in pregnancy or a period. A normal luteal phase lasts about 12 to 14 days after ovulation. So that means from the time you release an egg, it takes about 12 to 14 days in order for you to either become pregnant or when you're supposed to get your expected period. People with luteal phase deficiency means that their luteal phase is shortened. So after they release an egg from their follicle, that means that instead of the 12 to 14 days, they have less time between releasing an egg and getting their period. And this can lead to a lot of problems when trying to get pregnant. Now, some women with luteal phase defect still ovulate and they can get a fertilized egg. However, if you're not giving your body enough time between ovulation and implantation, the egg will not implant. Essentially, a shortened luteal phase is just the result of a hormone imbalance. This can mean that your body is not producing enough progesterone or not producing progesterone fast enough. And this leaves your estrogen to just go crazy. Let me break down how progesterone is created. So in the beginning of your cycle, you have follicles on your ovaries and these follicles are what hold the egg. Once a month during ovulation, your body releases an egg, sometimes multiple eggs. And what happens to that follicle after the egg is released is it crumples up and this becomes the corpus luteum. And this crumpled up follicle itself is what produces progesterone. Progesterone is the female sex hormone that is produced when an egg has been fertilized and is the hormone that helps maintain the pregnancy. So progesterone is very important to produce and keep producing while you have a fertilized egg and while it's being implanted. So what happens when I ovulate and we do our baby dancing, everything's all good, and my egg becomes fertilized, but then six days later, before my body can implant, I get my period. And what is essentially happening is I'm shedding my lining, which means I am shedding that fertilized eggs before it gets a chance to penetrate through my wall. If this is something you're dealing with, like myself, no fear, there are ways that you can treat this. Of course, you can always go see your doctor and they can put you on supplements and composites. However, if you're someone like me, there are definitely natural ways that you can treat this as well. Every woman's different, every body's different. And so me personally, what helps me may not help you. And so I wanna cover a couple different bases so you can kind of make your own judgments and proceed with your own way. The first thing I need to tell you guys to do is start charting your cycle. The most important thing to do is to pinpoint exactly when you are ovulating. The best way to do this is to buy the uh, internet OPK kits. They give you lots of tests because you're going to want to test multiple times a day. You do not want to miss your LH surge. God forbid you may be having ovulation in the very beginning of your cycle, but you're just not catching it. And so you think you're ovulating really late when the problem may be you're ovulating very early. So it's very important to properly understand what's going on with your body to pinpoint exactly when you are ovulating. And you can do this with OPKs, you can track your basal body temperature, you can uh, look out for the signs and symptoms in your CM, uh, some women experience cramping. I prefer not to just play it by feeling like that. I like to have the solid proof in front of me and the test strips are a really foolproof way to figure out when you are ovulating. So obviously the most important thing and what I consider the foundation of any trying to conceive journey is your nutrition. Your body will not get pregnant if it feels like it can't maintain a pregnancy. And the biggest part of that is making sure you have all the vitamins and minerals you need to sustain pregnancy. 
and the biggest portion of that comes from your nutrition and not just the supplements you take. And so make sure you have a balanced diet, you're getting all the nutrients and all the food groups you need, and that should really help you on your first step. The second most important thing would be controlling stress. When you are overly stressed, especially when it comes to the trying to conceive journey, we all know how stressful and heartaching this can be, but it's so important that you control your stress because what happens when your body gets overly stressed is it goes into survival mode. And guess what guys, fertility is not high on the priority list in survival mode. And so it's very important you get your stress under control and find ways to kind of cope with that stress or distract your mind and body into something else. And lastly, like I said, the main problem of these things is balancing your hormones. And so the third and final step would be finding something that helps balance out your cycle. Everybody's cycle's different, everyone has a regular cycle, so it's gonna be up to you to determine how to balance that. There are a couple things that I can offer advice to get you on the right path. Personally, something that I am doing this month to make sure that I ovulate earlier next month would be to start taking Vitex. The second supplement you could take is actually the brand Pink Stork makes a fertility supplement. In this fertility supplement, it does contain Vitex as well. So um, amongst other things to help get your egg health up, um, to help other hormones as well. So I couldn't give you the whole list. I'll drop the link down below of where you can buy Pink Stork and you can look into the ingredients themselves. I am personally not on this, but I have heard women that have had miraculous results with just taking the Pink Stork fertility supplement. So I'll definitely drop Vitex and Pink Stork down below so you can check them out and do your own research. It may work for you better than it has for others. So this is all about trial and error and that sucks the most because it takes time to find out the right thing that works for you, um, but it's very important that you get to the root of the cause and that you fix it. Some symptoms you could be facing if you are dealing with luteal phase defect or a low progesterone deficiency. Uh, so this is the symptoms are kind of split up into different things because there are two different ways that you can know you're dealing with this. There are symptoms for low progesterone and there are symptoms for high estrogen. So remember, the whole reason for this happening is there is an imbalance in your hormones. And so for low progesterones, the symptoms could be a lot of spotting in your luteal phase. So right after you ovulate before you're supposed to get your period, you could be noticing some spotting down there that may be a little abnormal to you. It can cause anxiety in your luteal phase just because your hormones are out. So if you're feeling extra nervous, extra paranoid, extra sad, or depressed even, this could be a sign. The more common signs is weight fluctuation. Some women say they um, have lower appetite so they lose weight, and some women say they gain a lot of weight for no apparent reason at all during this time. On the other side, high estrogen symptoms would be fibroids, uh, it would be heavy periods, irregular heavy flows during your periods, and then cyst and PMS symptoms, uh, which could also be very painful periods. I hope this video helped you guys. I know that dealing with luteal phase defect can be really hard and really upsetting, especially when all you want is to be able to have a baby and it feels like all your body is doing is fighting against that. But please just know that you are not alone. There are a lot of women out there doing the same things as you're doing, dealing with the same things you're dealing with, and I think more than ever, it's important to find that sense of community, and I want you all to know that I am here for you. I feel your pain. If you want someone to talk to, come talk to me. I promise you we can exchange advice, tips, and tricks. If you know something that I didn't mention, or if I can help you guys out in any way, that's what I'm here for, and that's what I'm looking for out of this. So uh, please drop a comment. Let me know your story. I'd love to hear it all. I wish you guys all the best of luck on your journey. And of course, as always, I'm blowing you all the baby dust. See you guys.